everybody, this is a lecture on conservation of linear momentum and collisions. So the big idea in this lecture is that uh, linear momentum is always, always, always conserved in a collision. Um, and, and the key here is that there are only internal forces that are acting, which means no outside forces. It is going to be a closed system. Closed system. So nothing from the outside can interact with their objects. And in reality, this, uh, this is effectively true because collisions occur only over a very short period of time. So there's not enough time for outside forces to act. Uh, to prove this, we can use Newton's third law of motion. And Newton's third law is always true. So if we have any objects that interact, maybe they bump into each other, maybe they pull on each other, maybe they push on each other, well, they're going to apply equal and opposite forces by Newton's third law. So if this has a magnitude, force of magnitude f, this is going to apply a magnitude of f. Let's say f1 and f2, well, they're going to be equal and opposite. So f1 equals negative f2. But they're also both interacting at the same time. Whenever one is pushing, the other is pushing. So the time intervals that they are applied are the same for both. So we could say, multiply both sides by time, we get force one times time equals negative force two times time. And by the impulse momentum theorem, where force times a time is a change in momentum, uh, we can substitute in our change in momentum to the left and right side. Left side is going to be the change in momentum for the first object. The right side is the change in momentum for the second object. So we get the change in momentum of the first object is always going to be equal, or equal and opposite to the change in momentum of the second object. So if we add those up together, the total change is going to be equal to zero. Say this is 3, then this is going to be negative 3, so our total momentum is conserved. Always, always, always. Um, so this lets us analyze collisions, and a collision is any event in which uh, objects exert forces on each other in a relatively short period of time. Car accidents are common collisions that we deal with, um, but really any interaction can be a collision as long as it's over a short period of time. Um, so when we have a collision, we can write our statements of conservation of momentum. And we already derived this one. The change in momentum for one object is equal to the negative change in momentum for the other object. Another way to say that is the total momentum at the beginning is equal to the total momentum at the end. So we could say the initial momentum for object 1, P1 initial, plus the initial momentum for object 2, P2 initial equals the final momentum for object 1, p1 final, plus the final momentum for object 2, p2 final. And if we plug in our mass and initial velocity, and our mass and our final velocity, we get this equation. This is conservation of linear momentum in one dimension, m1u1 plus m2u2 equals m1v1 plus m2v2, where the u is our initial velocity, before the collision, v is our final velocity after the collision. Objects one and two are the two objects. Um, and since since uh, momentum is a vector, this is a vector equation. Um, so we need to put in the correct signs for all of our velocities or all of our momentums if we're using this top one or this bottom one. And, and since momentum is conserved as a vector, we can break down our momenta into x and y components if we want. And conservation of momentum is going to apply independently for all directions, for all components of our vector. Um, and if we go to this little example in black down here, we have a, a mass here. It collides with a resting mass here, and they glance off of each other. It moves this way. The other move, object moves up. Well, if we think about our object, it was initially moving to the right, so there was no vertical momentum. So that means at the end, we'll have no vertical momentum. How can that be? Because this 3 kilogram object is moving up partially at the end. Well, it's just the vertical momentum. The upward momentum of this object is canceled out by the, upward, or by the downward momentum of this object. 
So the total vertical momentum is still zero. And then our horizontal momentum is just going to be whatever the, the total horizontal momentum was initially. So the great thing about conservation of momentum is we don't actually need to know what forces are involved, how long they're acting, any of that to, uh, to analyze collisions. We can just look at the speeds of the object and the masses before and after the collision. Um, there are three types of collisions that you'll see. One is just standard collisions, and really this includes all collisions, but this is just going to be any interaction with each other, uh, where objects bump into each other, push on each other, pull on each other. And that's just going to use our standard conservation of momentum equation. We can see some collisions over here, bumping into each other, particles. Um, one special case of collision, though, is called a perfectly inelastic collision. You can think of elastic as being very bouncy. So if it's inelastic, it's not going to bounce. And for a perfectly inelastic collision, uh, objects are going to bump into each other and stick together, which means their final velocities are the same. And in an inelastic collision, we're going to dissipate a bunch of our energy as kinetic energy. Um, because like when you compress something, uh, you're converting that kinetic energy to other types. But since our final velocities are the same, we can really write them both as one variable. For example, v1 here, v2, just write as v. We can factor that out, and the right side of our equation simplifies. Uh, the, the initial momentum of the first object plus the initial momentum of the second object equals the final momentum of our combined object, of the combined masses. object. And so here's an example of a perfectly inelastic collision. A fish is swimming, coasting, and eats another fish. Now there is an error in this video, or in this GIF. It starts out at 5 miles an hour. After it eats the fish, it should slow down to 4 miles an hour, kilometers an hour. The other type of collision is an explosion. Now an explosion doesn't mean there, there's a literal explosion, but it can't. Explosions happen because external forces push objects apart. So our objects will start out together, which means they have the same initial velocity, and then they get pushed apart. This means that the kinetic energy is always going to increase because we have to add energy to push these objects apart. Um, but just like before, since our initial velocities for the two objects are the same, we can treat our two objects as a single object moving at a single speed and our equation simplifies to this. m1 plus m2 times the initial velocity equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Here's an explosion right here. In a gun, whenever a gun is fired, there is a literal explosion that pushes the bullet out to the right. The bullet goes to the right, and the gun goes to the left. And those momenta uh, change for each of those objects are equal. You can see this woman feeling the momentum change from the rifle. 